so without further ado, allow me to present Crystal Clear. Thanks, Joey. Uh, so I'll introduce the application that we've made. Uh, we've called it the Configurable Dashboard Canvas. As Joey said, our team name is Crispal Clear. Uh, as we work for Crisp, that kind of works, but this came from the fact that very early on in our project, um, we were on a Slack call and someone over uh, misheard me saying, uh, is everything crystal clear? And then actually they thought I said Crispal Clear. And so the name stuck. Next slide, please. So to introduce our application, our employer Crisp set us a challenge of not using React um, and instead using Lit, which is a language that they themselves use as an organization. The application is meant to be a tool that users, so staff members, can create their own reports using off-the-shelf charting web components. And this is something that does already exist in terms of staff could request a report internally, but it's quite labor intensive. So there was a need for the staff members themselves to be able to create um, this report themselves simply and using the data that the employer, our employer already has in the background. Um, the application needed to be scalable and flexible from a technology point of view. And so those, were, those things were our focus. I'll hand over to Owen for a demonstration. Thank you, Mark. So once the demo video is um, up, I'll uh, go through that with you all. As you can see here anyway, our application, we wanted a nice landing page where you can launch the tool and it's a nice place to um, start on the application. So when you open the application, you are displayed with an A4 canvas, each with an, a lot of additional grid slots, which you can place components in. The first example we're going to do is the bar chart. Each um, component has a different amount of data sets that you can put into. Um, and this is just due to how the different charts are displayed on the page. So when we press update chart, the Vardian chart renders, and you can interact with this chart by hovering over the little bits of the chart. You can also double click on any of the components to change the data, and the data is persistent from what you had in last time. You can also resize and drag the components to anywhere you'd like on one of the grid slots on the canvas. However, if it goes out of the, um, the canvas view, it gets hidden. So now we'll add in a polar chart. Similar to the bar chart, you've got to enter the data you wish. However, this one only takes one form of data. This is because the polar chart actually has three charts nested within it, the area, the line, and the column chart. And like all the others, you can resize, move, and put this wherever you like on your canvas. After this has been resized, we'll move on to the generic items. So the generic items we have are a text box and an image upload. Firstly, the text box, we have another different options such as font size, the coloring of the font color or the background, and some additional styling such as italics, underline, and bold. And depending on what you choose, once you press update text box, this is what will be displayed. You can edit anything you like into this text box, make it as big as you like, and also resize and move like any other component on the app. Next, we'll show the image upload. And this is very similar. However, the form, the input form is different in the fact that it's an image file that you've got to upload from the local system. Here, we'll upload the Crisp logo and resize it to a suitable size, and then we'll be ready to export this canvas as a PDF. So in the top left corner, we can go to the drop down menu and say export as PDF. And this will automatically remove the grid lines and the borders to, prevent, uh, to present sorry, our final canvas that we've created there. We can also remove any component we like if we're not interested in having it on the page anymore in three different ways. We can drag it into the bin on the bottom right. We can click on a component and use the um, Alt and Backspace key bind, or we can remove all the components using the clear canvas. There's also a settings menu, which will display after we put a chart onto um, the canvas. And in the settings menu, we can either disable the borders or disable the, the grid, just to give a little preview of what the PDF might look like once it's exported. Finally, we've got help menu, which goes over all the different functionalities that we've added, whether that be on the canvas or the actual components. And that's it for our demo. Thank you. I'd like to pass you on to Thraka, who's going to talk about all the technologies involved in creating this. And there was a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Owen, and hello, everyone. OK, um, first of all, I would like to say that we had great fun discovering and learning several new technologies for this project. Now, our application is based around the web component library called Lit, and we also used uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS to build the application. 
in terms of project management technology, our code was assembled, to, uh, assembled through GitHub branch management. We use Slack for team communication and Trello for Kanban boards. Next slide, please. It's also worth noting that we use several external libraries to build the functionality of our application. We use some of these libraries to introduce context, custom components, and routing into it. We also displayed our client data using Wadin charts. Uh, three separate libraries had to be implemented to generate the PDF file. Now, apart from these libraries, we also used local storage as well as a web component loader in the application. And the drag and drop functionality was implemented using HTML drag and drop API. I'm now going to br uh, briefly outline the project challenges we faced. Initially, we found it quite challenging to discover the full capability of Lit. This was due to the limited documentation and, and online content available. However, through persistent research as well as trial and error, we ended up gaining a significant understanding of Lit. Now, apart from this, we also found it, uh, found it quite tricky to implement the drag and drop functionality. This was due to the fact that we had to traverse across multiple layers of Shadow DOM in order to retrieve and append elements. With regards to the PDF generation, we were unable to find any single library that was able to capture the content inside of a web component into a PDF file, especially with Wadin charts. So we found a solution through linking three separate libraries in order to generate the PDF file instead. We also have a couple of remaining challenges. One of these would be to re-render our Wadin charts after importing data from local storage. We would also like to be able to inject uh, properties into a web component from several, several providers, as this capability is crucial for introducing page customization features for the application. Uh, next slide, please. I will now pass over the presentation on to Mark, who will discuss about the skills we developed throughout the project. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Thraka. Um, so some of the skills that we developed over the course of the project, um, primarily we focused a lot of our time on learning and implementing the lit package. Um, it was completely brand new to us and it was somewhat familiar, but also um, quite a challenge to understand an entirely new package when we just come straight out of React. So we spent a lot of time up front spiking um, lit and all the new technologies that we were going to have to use to be able to achieve our minimum viable product. Uh, we also relied a lot on each other um, you know we're a small team of three so we had to try and implement um, learning on different technologies and then learn from each other as well we also spent a lot of our uh, time focusing on project management um, we really tried to use the agile inspired methodology and focused a lot on prioritization of our resources again as a, just a team of three uh, we really had to focus our time on the best possible tickets to make sure that we could meet the minimum product this then naturally led to um, a real development of our team communication skills. So whilst we spent a lot of time you know, carrying out our daily stand-ups and our daily stand-downs, we were really in touch with each other all throughout the day. Um, this was just that we could check in if anyone needed help, to share learning, and just check that progress was kind of meeting expectations. We also relied a lot on Kanban boards, and this was just to help us keep track of the sheer number of different things that we had to do. And finally, um, we, whilst we were quite comfortable with GitHub um, from the bootcamp, we then had to get to grips with branch management. Um, so we're kind of quite au quite fait okay with that now as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, to touch on future development, um, we'd like to introduce a login functionality so that staff members would be able to log into their own account. Once logged in, then be able to actually choose which of um, Crisp's clients they would like to prepare a report for. And then once within the client's accounts, we'd be able to choose the various data sources for the charts, which link into the back end at Crisp. And this would mean that each of the charts would be unique. And users would then ideally be able to save as many of these as they want to, access them again in the future, and export that canvas or that report uh, to, to either internally or externally using magic or deep links. And uh, just onto the last slide, please. So that's our presentation. Uh, look forward to any questions. Thank you.